we, about being shopaholics. But uh, for Helen McNallan, her addiction to buying clothes really was anything but a joke. Uh, in just four years, she spent £200,000 on that addiction. It eventually cost her her marriage. She nearly lost her home, very nearly lost her sanity. She's here now this morning along with hypnotherapist Marissa Peer. Um, and it all started, Helen, after you left your job. I would have thought, well, if you're going to start spending, do it while you're earning some money. That was, was that strange? That... Well, I was very happy in my job, and it was a, um, a high-powered job in the city. Um, so I didn't feel the need. There was nothing lacking in my life. I was quite happy, and I had a buzz, and I worked very hard. On good money? Yeah, 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 good money, yes. Long hours, you know, mm -hmm. six in the morning until late at do? night. What did you do? I was a city? trader. On, oh, yes. Yeah, with all the, the boys in the city. That's very high pressure. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. But it was good fun. We worked really hard and then we played really hard. So, mm -hmm. so why did you give that up? Uh, I worked too hard for too long. Um, it was 10 years and put all my eggs in one basket. I didn't have a family. I, everything was my work. And when I had a breakdown and left work, there was a huge void. I had no family, no children. Mm -hmm. I had a, a very supportive husband, but I just felt a failure, particularly because working in the city, I couldn't, I didn't feel I could admit what my problem was, the breakdown. You just, working with all the men, I had a huge issue about that anyway. And I had to fill it with something, so I filled it with majorly shopping and um, also mm -hmm. food. Yes, mm. but you weren't, you weren't earning the same money no, as you were absolutely. earning before, so you knew this was a law of diminishing returns absolutely. here. Absolutely, that was, that was the problem, yeah. So when it started, when you say I filled it with shopping, did it start off just like, oh, I haven't got anything to do today, my husband's at work, no. I'll just tootle off to the shops, and then it kind of grew and grew, or did it happen quite quickly? Funnily enough, when I was really low, the only thing I used to get out of bed for, seriously, was this programme. I used to time it to 28 <laughs> minutes past 10, jump out of bed and watch this programme. That was the only thing in my life, but then I... Um, became bipolar and it's the manic yeah. highs and I was trying to control my mood with shopping so and that's you, when the problems started. When you, when you hit the shops, did you go out looking for anything particular? Yeah. Did you care what you spent? What, what no. feelings did you get? What's I was looking for a high you? that I used to get from my job and the feel of importance. I thought people looked down on me. I felt like a failure when I lost my job and I wanted to make it appear. When you're working, I didn't need to show that I had, I was happy with mm. what I had. But when I didn't have it, I felt I had to show people that I was still what I was because I didn't feel I was what I was. Because I know you, you know, a lot of stores offer, <coughs> excuse me, personal shoppers. Yeah. Oh, yes. And you, you know, said you loved that because that kind of made you quite... Well, I important. thought that was very exciting. And I did a film once and I got a personal shopper <laughs> showing me around the They're store. Great. <laughs> and I have to say, I thought to myself, now this, this is mm. the business. I could see how With you your got coffee, off on and this. champagne. Yes, and, and they bring, the thing is about a, a personal shopper is, you say, do you know, I fancy a, a shirt. Do you have any blue ones? And they come and they go and get every blue one in your size. And in you the like store. everything. And they bring it mm. to you. You do nothing. You don't sweat walking around. You don't get sore feet. You don't get anything, do so you? So what, what would you have spent in a day? At your worst, what would you have spent in a day? I would go into the personal shopping and come out having spent £4,000 a time. Yeah. And my poor husband was yeah, yeah so distraught. then you go you know most most of us know we go home we hide things in the boot yes. of the car wait till he's gone and shove it upstairs That's and what we're I not did. looking do we not myself <laughs> <I'm sorry. Yeah. laughs> clearly not the boot of the car yeah. mm. so did, <laughs> were, <laughs> were you hi were you hiding things from him did, yeah. when did he realize that this was becoming such a big problem well he saw the account um, you know diminishing the money's the funds in the account and i had to remortgage the property and credit cards mm. and um, overdrafts and, and we're talking here i mean if, if i've got this right your remortgage was a hundred it was actually pounds. more than that was in it? a short yeah. period of time yeah tell which you what you, your husband you must have loved you he is a saint actually yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he did now at what stage did marissa come in on all this when when did you arrive on the scene marissa helen's doctor sent me to her when she came to me i mean Poor Helen, she was suicidal. She but was you don't go to the doctor and shopper. say, Doctor, I can't, I, I've got this terrible trouble, I spent money all the time. Do, do, is it dressed no, it, up as something else? It was the bipolar manic right. depression. Mm. Right. Yeah. Her doctor sent, me, sent her to me with depression, suicidal depression. I mean, she was in a terrible, terrible state. So her big problem was depression. But of course, when you're a therapist, you don't work with one problem, you look for the cause of the problem. And Helen um, was three stone heavier than she is now. She was shopping every single day. I mean, she'd go out and buy 10 pairs of sunglasses or 20 pairs of shoes. But she was so depressed, I mean, and I really felt for her. 
And so, because there was so much, it's like all different branches of a tree, I immediately was trying to look for what was the cause of everything, because you'll find with lots of symptoms, they all go back to the same cause. And, and in and Helen's case... Excuse me case, for asking, without breaching any confidentiality or anything, is that something you can tell us what that cause was? Oh, yeah. It, with Helen, it was very simple. She just didn't feel that she was enough. I mean, it sounds such a silly problem, but it's the cause of so many people's problems. I mean, I, I lecture and I have a book, and one of the chapters in it is about being enough, and people write to me and say, you know what? When I read that bit about how to be enough, it changed my life. And so she didn't but feel enough. You see, you see, you've just said that, and I would reckon seven out of ten people watching this mm -hmm. morning will say, do you know what? That's me. That's of me. Of course. Why do people... Why, why are people afraid of disappointing? Because no matter what they are in real life, whether they're arrogant, whether they're funny, whatever show they put on about it, it appears to be deep down there's this insecurity not, coming from yeah. where? Not feeling good enough, not feeling lovable enough. Is this our just society? Not Is this media? Yeah, this you know, if you magazine? went to live in a tribe, you wouldn't feel like that because we live in a society where you're a product. And if you're a product, you've got to have all the products. So you've got to have the latest bag mm. or the latest car. And then a year later, you don't want that latest bag. You've got to mm. have another bag or you've just got these jeans and now they're dated so it isn't just about fashion and but as Helen was saying you know work defines quite a lot of us so hugely. that thing you know, and a lot of women I know friends of mine who who've given up work to have yeah. children so although they wanted to and mm. they love their kids suddenly just feel different because yeah. they don't have that getting up and going to work that kind of makes you feel mm. worthy somehow yeah so if it isn't what you do then it becomes who you are and so who you are is defined by what you look like what you wear what label you have on. I mean, you know, I work with 12-year-olds who now have got this thing about they've got to look right mm. and dress right. And so it sounds very simple to peel our problems back to not being enough. But when you know that you're enough, you don't need more. So you found out that you were enough and fairly quickly, it very seems, quickly. from your session. It's so a shame I didn't do that earlier because it yeah. maybe could have... Who, who flicked the switch? How was the, flick, the switch flicked? Um... I woke up in hospital, basically, mm -hmm. and uh, and when I finally realised that my marriage was nearly over and I was sent to Marissa, it kind of snowballed. I didn't realise I was going through the process of being cured um, because I actually didn't realise I was ill. It took yeah. me a long time to realise I was ill. I was in denial, and mm -hmm. my husband was saying to me, "You've got to stop spending," and I thought he was picking on me. Mm -hmm. So, so what's life now? Is that like being on a constant diet? I know you did lose weight as well, but mm -hmm. I mean, to go out into your shop and see handbag, sunglasses, a dress, anything. Look, Kim, I, can't, I feel very lucky to have come through this because I do feel whatever normal is these days. And I didn't realise how ill I was. It's taken people to tell me I'm very grateful to my parents-in-law, my sisters-in-law, you know, my family, friends. They've all been there all the way through. And I've written a book and you, you don't realise... And people have had to tell me because I had a lot of ECT, electrical convulsive therapy yeah. treatment, which erases your sort of memory sometimes, and I didn't. I myself didn't realise how bad it was, but looking back and what people have told me and writing the book has made. And I do. People just feel so. I know a lot of people watching this were probably because that's, that's what I used to do when I was so down. I used to watch you. There and you don't believe in the light at the end of the tunnel. You really, really do not. But there is. And why is there? Was it the therapy? It's the therapy self, was amazing. Was you ha sometimes you have to be in the right place. Therapy is great to receive it. To receive yeah. it and. Yeah. Uh, Marissa's voice in itself was enough to, as soon as I walked through her doors, calmed me instantly. The therapy, I've never experienced hypnotherapy before, I didn't know what to expect. So bizarrely, I couldn't open my eyes, I thought I can open my eyes, but you can't open your eyes and uh, it's, um, it's, it has... Are you cured yes. or have you to keep being... No, she to no, tap up only, no. only four times. No. I made her a lot of tapes and I made her say every day when she woke I, up, I'm, I'm enough. enough, I'm enough, I, I made her write it on her mirror. and um, no, she saw me four times. Are you happy? And you truly believe you're enough now? I truly believe I'm enough. Obviously, my marriage has fallen apart, which I can't change. But I'm happy in myself now and I'm moving forward. Are you still in debt? No. I've sort of, I'm, well, that's yeah, good. I'm I mean, you're a slim woman. You look well. You're not in debt. You're single. I mean, I've it lost could, my weight. You know, I'm it's fit. Not, and well, you don't not cost too much. In the water. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> not it's now. not bad. Any offers? <laughs> ITV.com this morning. At, <laughs> we'll get all this sorted out, don't worry. <laughs> Helen, absolutely amazing to hear your story. Continue to be well, and it's a fantastic work from you. 
Thank you very much. Well, anyone Thank can do it. I mean, yeah. that the great thing is that you don't have to take lots of drugs. If you go to a good therapist and especially mm -hmm. work on this thing about being enough, anyone can be helped, and very quickly, too, mm -hmm. if you go to the right person. We're going to talk to your GPs, we say, because they can Absolutely. refer you as well. Don't be so afraid to. The stigma's, it. Get, that's why I, the stigma's getting less and less. Please, yeah, the doctors are there. You go for a cold, so why wouldn't you go when you're feeling really, really depressed? Good point. Very good point. Thank you. Uh, you can find out more details on coping with addictions, whatever they are, on our website.